All right, folks. So in today's video, we're going to talk a little bit about attenuators and how you may use them when you're an amateur radio operator like myself. So what we have here is a couple of different examples of attenuators, and I'm just going to pick them up and start talking about them. And as we talk through them, you'll probably get some ideas. So this is the one I call the big ass attenuator. And we use attenuators like this for a couple of different things. Namely, it is when we want to reduce uh, power coming from a device such as a radio for example and we want to feed that power at a degraded level into test equipment and a test equipment could be an oscilloscope it could be a spectrum analyzer uh, it could be something and we do this a lot on this channel uh, as we use something like this a tiny sa that you can use to take a look at your signal and see if your radio is emitting spurious emissions if it's occupied bandwidth is too large uh, you can check power levels and you account for these attenuators in your test equipment to uh, make sure that you get an accurate measurement uh, the other thing is, is that most modern radios these days, uh, and even a lot of the older ones, come with built-in attenuators because a signal that you might be receiving is a little bit too strong and is causing some interference or overloading on your radio. And you can use your attenuator to kind of reduce that power level and make your signal more audible, the one that you're trying to listen to. But here we have a couple of different ones and a couple of different devices. And I just want to quickly mention, this is not a dummy load. This one is a dummy load. These are not dummy loads. Even though they look similar, the one thing you'll look for in attenuator is it'll have an input and an output. So the dummy load just has an input. But they operate very similarly. This is basically just a resistor network in here. Now, there's a couple of different ways to do that, but we're not going to get into all that. And then it has an output. So if you take a look at this attenuator, you can see it says SMA because it has SMA connectors, 10 watts, uh, 10 dB, and it's good from DC, which is zero hertz, all the way up to three gigahertz. And it's a good idea to test these. Um, I've had two buddies who were trying to take measurements off of a handheld and feed them into a tiny SA for some tests that we do. And they were getting very erratic results. And then after troubleshooting it uh, pretty extensively, we learned it wasn't the radio that was a problem. It wasn't the tiny SA. It was the attenuator itself. So with these attenuators, a lot of them are bi-directional, meaning that you could feed your signal into either side. But a lot of them will come with a sticker like this on them that says in and out. Now, this one had a sticker on it, but it's missing because you can see even this sticker starting to come off. This one is... 10 watts at 40 dB, DC to 3 gigahertz. And I did mark this in, and I marked this side out, but I don't think it really matters too much. Um, you can get smaller attenuators at lower power levels. Like these are 2 watt attenuators. I believe one's 10 dB, and one is, you can, so you can see I met label this one 2 watts, and then here you can see the attenuation. Heck, I can't read that. 15 dB, so it's a negative 15 dB attenuator. And they often come with different connector types. So these are N-type connectors that you would see on this one. The other ones were SMA. But it's a good idea if you do a lot of connections like this, you want to pick up a bunch of these adapters of various sizes. So you can tailor this to your cables and to your test equipment. This one is an attenuator that is what you would call a variable attenuator. And if you take a look on that, you see different values. So for example, let's turn it all off. If I have them all turned off, it's zero dB of attenuation, but I could press like this 20 and let's just say this eight. And now I would have 28 dBs of attenuation. And then this one has SMA connectors, as you can see. Now, what I want to do is I want to hook one of these up to a spectrum analyzer. We're going to hook it up to my Siglent uh, spectrum analyzer so we can take a look at exactly what an attenuator does and how it works. The last thing I'm going to mention is, is that you can put these attenuators in series. It's pretty simple to do. And then that way you can connect them up to get increased reduction or attenuation of the signal that you're looking at. Now, what's important to remember is that this is the stronger one. So if you take a look at that, it'll say 10 watts, 40 dB. This would go closest to your output source, like your radio. And then the weaker one would go afterwards and then into your test equipment. And you do that because first you want to reduce the signal by 40 dB, which would reduce the power coming out. And then you can manage it with a smaller or, or less strong attenuator. So for this video, we're going to use my Siglin SA. It is the SSA 3021X. 
So that means that this goes up to 21 gigahertz in a nutshell. And on the lower right hand corner, you can see two ports, one marked tracking generator source and one marked RF input. Now that RF input is particularly sensitive. So when we test radios and or other equipment, one of the things that we like to do is make sure that our signal is attenuated to the appropriate level to go ahead and get the exact measurement that we want. Okay, so what we're looking at now is my Siglent Spectrum Analyzer. And you can see all the, oh, we see that, the controls right there. And I'm gonna roll in a picture real quick. I'm gonna talk a little bit about what this Spectrum Analyzer has. It's called a tracking generator. And I'm also gonna. So what we have here are two test leads, and then we have them connected to each other with the use of a barrel connector. We're gonna normalize the tracking generator, and it's important to have these test leads in place in the way that we are going to actually test our attenuator. Let me roll a picture of the attenuator when it's being tested now. And what you can see here is that I've just kept my test leads and my barrel connector in place, and then I've connected the attenuator in line. And that way our measurement is only going to show the difference that is made with the attenuator. It will not include any kind of reactants that we get from the barrel connector or from the test leads. Okay, so what I wanna do is I'm going to turn on the tracking generator and I do that like this, tracking generator state on. And what that's doing is feeding the signal out my tracking generator port and into my RF input. Now, what I wanna do is normalize this because you can see that we do have some variation in here and that is a result of the cables and the connector that we're using. So by normalizing that, I basically null that out. So let me go ahead and do that. And now what you see is we have a flat line across the top and we're ready to connect our attenuator in series with our lead cables. And let's go ahead and do that. Note up here at the top, our reference level is zero dB. So any attenuation we'll see will cause this yellow line to curve below that. So let's go ahead and do that now. Okay, so now what we can see is that our line has dropped down to 10 dB below our reference of zero. So we see this negative 10 dB line. And if you take a look at this, this line starts to get some variation here towards the end. And, and that's because even though this attenuator says it's good up to three gigahertz, it's probably not. Um, we're starting to see some of this uh, right over. Let me put a marker in here. So marker type normal. And there we go. We have a marker. And we can move this along our line. So if I move it up to right around here is where we start to see that variation. It's about at 1.5 gigahertz. And I think that's what we would expect. Now up here in the upper right hand corner, you can see that it's given us a reading of negative 10.34 dB. So if I keep moving this, let's go ahead and move it over a little bit. Here you can see it's negative 10 and a half and here's negative 10.6, 10.7. So it's close, it's pretty good. Uh, it's good enough for amateur radio. Um, let's move it up here a little bit. And you can see we're 10.07, 10.1, something along those lines. But this will really allow us to be able to take a signal, reduce the signal by 10 dB, and get a reading. And you have to be careful when you feed these higher power levels into your instrumentation because they are very, very sensitive and they work best with lower power levels. So I think when we talk about why we do a video like this is I wanted to show and talk a little bit about attenuators, show how we actually test them with something like a spectrum analyzer and why you would want to use one of these in your ham shack. And one of the things I want to tell you is if you have these and you use them, it is important to regularly check these to make sure that they're performing as they should. And that's the exact problem that my buddy had. His was performing fine, and then all of a sudden it wasn't, and we couldn't figure out what the problem was. And naturally, we assumed it was a problem with the device, the tiny SA, when it wasn't. Um, it's a good idea to keep an eye on these, and it's a good idea not to overload it with wattage higher than what it's rated for. And I suspect that's what happened to my buddy's attenuator. Anyhow, that's going to wrap it up. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, or recommendations, go ahead and post them below, and I'll do my best to respond. Thanks for watching, everybody.